We have got to go to like Ikea or something and find some high back chairs. Yes, I would love some of those. We need to work on our posture. Can we do a video like this? We need to. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch where we just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you can find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. It is Thursday morning. Happy day to you. Happy day. Cheers to your day. Got some coffee. This is the chocolate Nespresso. Mm. And then I have an egg yolk, one egg yolk. Uh, whipped inside of it, and I did it the Nisha Berry <laughs> method with Whips. using the little frother as the coffee is going in. I love it. Never done it that way. It came out really, I mean, it frothed up so much that it was like overflowing in the cup right. without even running it the second time. And you I had to go to bigger cups. And I like a lot of froth. Mm -hmm. Feels like some fanfare going on. What's yeah. going on for breakfast this morning? Breakfast is three eggs cooked in some Redmond Real salt and a whole bunch of butter, probably about a tablespoon and a half of butter. And when I went to Fresh Market, they had this chorizo sausage. Uh huh. And uh, he went through all the ingredients. There's no sugar in it. So I figured, why not get a couple of them? So I bought four links. The other two I put in the freezer. Super and, flavorful. And uh, put them in the air fryer. So, oh, because I know you love chorizo. I do. And this one has a nice kick. Um, the problem with chorizo, a lot of the store bought chorizos have a lot of sugar in them. Yeah. And um, I just want the flavor in the chorizo. So we're having that and some eggs. Busy day. Super, super busy. But that's all right. We're, everything is happening so that we can get one step closer to Keto Palooza. Mm -hmm. Keto Palooza is on the way next week. You'll probably be seeing this as we're on our drive to Keto Palooza yeah. or the day before. Because this time next week we'll be driving. We should be almost there. But we're caravanning. Yes, we are. Right, so we are actually meeting up with Chris and uh, somebody else, one of Chris's friends. Yeah. We're going to be meeting up with them probably somewhere about where the turnpike uh, meets up for her. And then we're going to be caravanning up. The plan is to get past Atlanta on Wednesday. We can do it. Which would leave about six hours to go on Thursday and then get in on Thursday. So I'm really excited about that. But also, yesterday, we had an amazing Zoom call with Robin from KetoCon. I can't believe it, but we are already talking about what's going to be happening in conference season in 2023. And KetoCon is early. It's like one of the first big conferences. I mean, you have Low Carb Boca, which we will not be going to. Even though it's in the backyard. And then there's Low Carb Denver, which I'm kind of up in the air about Low Carb Denver. I really want to go to Low Carb Denver, but we're going to Keto for Salt Lake the weekend before. Unless we could just make this a really nice long trip. Fly into Salt Lake, drive to Denver with the Bears, and then fly out of Denver. You've got some ambition. And when you say Keto Salt Lake, it's really a meetup. Yes. That they're going to be having. But we're going to Salt Lake. So, But after that, the next major conference is KetoCon. And you are not going to want to miss KetoCon in 2023. And you are not going to want to miss the ticket prices of KetoCon right now. Well, the ticket price is going to be $300 at the door. But and not right probably now. Probably about a month beforehand. But right now, and we're going to make sure we get this video out in time. So if you pre-purchase your tickets now, get the early bird ticket up until it's October 31st. Yes. 
you get all three days for a hundred bucks. A hundred dollars. Now, normally it's a hundred dollars a day for Sunday only. Right. And you don't even get into the talks. Right. Well, but I'm just, what I'm saying is it winds up being a hundred dollars a day because it's three hundred dollars for the right. ticket at the door. Right now you can get a hundred dollars for all three days. That's a special early bird deal. And I'm gonna make sure this video gets out in time if you haven't gotten them. Anybody who purchased their tickets by September 30th is entered in to win one of two VIP tickets. Which is worth $1,000. They are $1,000 a piece. So if you purchase on October 1st, you're out of the running for that. So you want to make sure that you get it in for $100. I think that that is a really nice Christmas present too, to be like, hey, next year we're going to go on a trip together right? and we're going to listen to some fabulous speakers. She's bringing in all kinds of cool stuff. There's going to be like, like cold water therapy. There's Red light be, therapy. There's going to be more of the, the DEXA scan be alone. four bands, she said, for the DEXA scan. Um, F-Bomb is going to be bringing back uh, their band. Yeah, which is so exciting because they've actually bought back their company. I'm so excited about it's that. It's just, it's absolutely um, a story of victory. So excited about that. And, um, and yeah. you're not going to want to miss Sunday. So a lot of times people leave early on Sunday. I'm just going to tell you, I don't want to disclose everything, but right. you're not going to want to miss Sunday. So plan on being there for Sunday. Sunday is going to be an amazing day, but definitely want to go. We don't get any money off of you guys want to buy tickets, but I'm telling no. you, $100, every other conference is $150, $200. Listen, I love Autumn. And we're going to Keto Palooza. Yeah, and excited. But Keto Palooza tickets are 200 bucks. Right. And so here you can get the largest Keto Conference for a hundred dollars. Yeah, you just kind of have to plan ahead. And you don't have to deal with Texas heat in July this year because it's going to be in yes. April. I'm excited about that. So I'm we'll not leave gonna, a link. I'm not going to lie. I'm excited about that. I'm really excited. We're going to leave a link down below for that. I know last year a bunch of our subscribers they even all went and got an Airbnb together, so that yeah. saves on some on some money for uh, a hotel accommodation kind of things. But I'm really excited for KetoCon. 2023. I mean, the only thing that we're waiting for is for Southwest to like open up that week so that we can buy airline tickets because mm -hmm. right now, like we know we're going and we know the date, which is really helpful. I can get JetBlue, but Southwest is really cheap from Florida there. So, so we were talking to Robin last night, not Robin from KetoCon, but Robin from our friend from Mighty Networks. Um, she, we went out to Texas de Brazil last night because she was in town on business. Yep. And so we totally took that opportunity to get to hang out last night. And she was saying that, um, she had already gotten her tickets for KetoCon and, uh, and in the last year she, or this year rather, she won a Vitamix. That's right. At KetoCon. So talk about like great prizes that get, you know, are given away during this conference. But she was saying that she's also waiting like Southwest, come on one more week and then they'll open it up so that yeah. we can get cheap airline tickets. And also as a little bonus, we are going to be speaking and uh, we are, it looks like we're going to be emceeing one of the days as well. So, so you want to come just to hang out with us. Yes, right? please. I mean, along with everybody else, and, you know, but yeah, I'm really excited about that. So yeah, busy day. I got to go cut work with, uh, cut grass with Anthony. <laughs> I was like, you got to go cut work. Anthony has a high school football game at four o'clock. So we have to get done early. Uh, we are finishing up our coursework. You've got stuff that you're working on. I'm editing videos and I'm editing our uh, podcast, which again, if you are not yet subscribed to any of our Check podcasts, it out. make sure you're downloading all our podcasts. We have to load new podcasts every Tuesday and Friday. And it's on all the available pod, uh, podcast platforms. So Google, Spotify, uh, Audible, Apple Podcasts, you name it, we're on there. But it's going to be a fun day because then tonight, we have our live stream. With Coach Bronson. Okay, so I uh, got home from work and immediately started working on videos. Didn't even go take a shower. I have so much to do, I just wanted to get it done. So I sat down, I started working. Rachel's been doing a bunch of writing. Uh, she's doing a phenomenal job. But anyway, I got so busy with work, I completely forgot to take this beef tenderloin out of the refrigerator. Uh, this is a six uh, pound beef tenderloin. And I was going to show you how to cook this in the oven. The problem is you're supposed to bring it up to room temperature 
for about two hours before you do that. So we're gonna have to scratch that. I'll have to show you how to do that tomorrow. Uh, so I've got some ground beef defrosting, that'll be done. We've got some ground pork already defrosted. We're gonna do some eggs and stuff. But here's what I'm gonna do. Since we can't show you how to make the beef tenderloin today, I do have something I can show you how to do and this is perfect video for it. I've got some ribeye steaks, but guess what? They're frozen. These are frozen solid. So I'm gonna show you how you can take beautiful steaks that are in your refrigerator and get them ready for yourself within about an hour and a half to two hours to eat. So we're gonna cook these in a sous vide. Okay, so we got our ribeye here. And uh, you can see this is frozen solid, frozen solid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this plastic wrap off. And the easiest way to probably do this is start unwrapping it and just run it under a little bit of water. Uh, I'd like to be able to separate these steaks, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it unless I get them a little bit defrosted. But if not, that's okay, we can still cook them. So we're gonna go ahead and get these unwrapped. So good news, they actually have these individually wrapped. So you have one here and then I was able to just put a little bit of water on it and separate them like that. So these are frozen solid. I'm not even gonna put any salt or pepper on them. We're gonna do this like a reverse here. We're gonna start them in the sous vide, which we just heard beep up the temperature, and then we're gonna sear them in a pan with some salt, pepper, and butter. So like I said, we're gonna cook this in the Anova oven. Now, if you don't have an Anova, that's okay. You can use a regular sous vide. Uh, just put it inside of a silicone bag. The reason that I like the Anova is I don't need a silicone bag. So I'm gonna set this, I have it set for 130.5 degrees. As far as temperature, it depends on where you wanna have your steak. I want my steak to fall at about 135. So I'm gonna set it for 130. I'm gonna shoot for taking it out when it gets to about 125 degrees. But I have that ability to do it because I'm not putting it inside of a bag. So I can go and check it with a meat probe. Uh, if you leave it at 130, you can run it in there for five hours. The meat's never gonna go over 130 degrees. I'm trying to cook it just a little bit faster. I'd like it to be done in about an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, so 130 degrees is a good temperature to bring it up in about two hours from frozen. If we weren't going from frozen, uh, it would take probably about 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, but you can even raise it up to like 135, 140. Just watch the temperature of the meat itself. Unfortunately, this is frozen so I can't put my meat probe in until it starts to defrost. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and stick these steaks in here. And like I said before, uh, I don't have to put them in silicone bag because it's a sous vide oven. So as far as time, cooking from frozen, I'm figuring about an hour and a half to two hours. If we weren't frozen, it would be about 45 minutes to an hour. But this is the cool thing about sous vide. You just set it for the temperature that you don't want it to exceed. So if I put it at 130 degrees, it may take a little bit longer but it'll never exceed 130 degrees. So even if it takes three hours, we're gonna be good. But just if you have the opportunity, come back and you check it in about an hour, see where you're at, that'll help you judge it. Okay, uh, it's been about an hour and a half. We're gonna go ahead and check these steaks. Just pull it out a little bit. You can see all that humidity in there, because again, sous vide cooking. And uh, look at that. We are at 130 degrees right in the middle. Look at that. And again, I could leave this in here for two more hours. It will never go over 130. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this Redmond's organic garlic pepper and I'm gonna put some on each side. And I'm not gonna dry this off right now because I'm gonna let it sit here while I get a cast iron pan hot. So at the very last second, I'm gonna dry it off with a paper towel to get a really good sear. But right now I'm using the liquid on there to kind of adhere. Look at that. Uh, we're using the liquid to kind of adhere the salt and pepper to the steak. Now the salt in here will actually help to dry it out a little bit more as well. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a cast iron and we're gonna get it super hot. And now my pan is hot, I'm gonna take a paper towel and just kind of blot dry these steaks just a little bit. You can see how like all that moisture is already coming out. Look at that. And we're gonna come over here to our cast iron and we're gonna just sear these and it's only gonna be like 30 seconds on each side.
Now what I'm going to do is uh, after I flip it over, I'm going to put a little bit of this tallow butter on here, which is basically just beef tallow. You could also use regular butter. So we're going to go ahead and flip this over now. And you're going to just let this sear depending on the crust you want. Now we're going to put a little bit of tallow butter in there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take these off and we're going to get some eggs going. I'm painting my steak. Well, it's not beef tenderloin, but it is your favorite cut of steak. But is it a ribeye? It is a ribeye. Yay! Oh, happy day! And the cool thing is, it's like literally from frozen to cooked. Oh my goodness! In How less long? than two hours. Mm. And we're going to check this. It is right on. I want to get it so I can show it. It is right on. Oh my gosh. Okay. It is Let me perfect. grab a napkin here. You seasoned it really nicely too. Okay. Look at that. Wow. So you can see. What did you cook that in? In the Innova. Wow. In the Innova oven. So it is edge to edge pink with a nice sear on the outside. Absolutely beautiful. Less than two hours. Wow. From frozen. I literally like grabbed it out of the freezer. Like hard stuck frozen. It in, hard frozen. Stuck it in the Innova to 130 degrees, about an hour and a half, pulled it out, seared it. Wow. Pretty impressive. Mmm. And then I think that the, the beef tartare egg yolk kind of... Hit you right because that's what that what that was was I don't know if you know that was a sous vide egg yolk yeah so it's like really mushy it was super but mushy. it makes it like a really good gravy for that beef tartare it held up I mean they had to actually mash it into the beef tartare mm hmm so we got mm. along with that I have four eggs Rachel has three eggs mm. uh, we do have some bacon going I can hear it sizzling right next there. to me. Uh, that's probably for tomorrow, uh, but I just started cooking it up. Or maybe for tonight. We don't I know. I had the pan going. But if we're still hungry after this, we can have some bacon. We can have some more eggs. Mm. And then we're just going to extend this onto tomorrow for the beef tenderloin. Um, I've got school in a little while. And then after that, we have our live stream with Bronson. Okay, it's tenderloin. Just making sure. What? Last night, our daughter sent us a picture. What did you think it was? I wasn't sure. I thought maybe like a tongue. This is not a cow tongue. Actually, it looks like another part. And it's not like a part that we would normally discuss. Well, right. So our daughter sent us a picture last night of me. And like, what am I supposed to do with this? And it I, was a I tongue. actually want that. I, I, I was like, send it to me because... We want to buy some tongue. And unfortunately, with all of our traveling, we haven't been able to do as much um, when it comes to, you know, making a bunch of recipes for beef, butter, bacon, eggs. No. I really wanted to. So I do think we're going to extend some of that kind of stuff yeah. into the month of October. Because maybe somebody will use it later even. And honestly, I'm going to continue probably 80% beef, butter, bacon, eggs into Same. October anyway. Um, I want to have some keto chow. I do want to have a couple of little things, but really focusing on beef, butter, bacon today. So today, yes, we are making tongue. No, that's it. That would be it. I wonder, is that how big their tongues are though? That's a pretty long piece of meat. We were actually watching um, a YouTube video mm -hmm. from this guy that does like, um, he doesn't tell anybody what the protein is. It's like- Sous vide everything. Sous vide everything. It was very interesting. And here's the thing. So he did use the penis. <laughs> he used the bull penis. And but he doesn't tell anybody. He, he makes doesn't. The, and I'll leave a link for it up here. And as far as like the cooking method to do it- It was know, a lot of work. It was a lot like of 48 work. 48 hours. But what was interesting, what my takeaway was, because I mean, he's preparing it with stuff we wouldn't use some of the ingredients that he's using, but his preparation, you could probably emulate, right? Because mm -hmm. of the way he has to cook it very slow and methodically. Um, but when he's done, 
everybody's like, this is delicious. And then he tells them what it is. And then they're like, and even though now I know it's delicious, I don't want another bite of that. I tried to talk Anthony into doing a mystery meet with us. Like, do it. How about I'll I'll show you how to run the camera. You film preparing a mystery meat. Do not tell us what it is. It could be something really gross, like or bull, fine. bull penis. And he and then we'll film you giving it to us. He's like, no. I'm like, why? He's like, because that means I have to eat it too in order to make sure I'm doing it right. He's like, no, thank you. He's like, I am not doing that. It was a, it was a fun, and honestly, it was a fun video. Other than the extra stuff that he made with it, yeah, you could eat it. It was basically just really good sauces, but it was all keto. But he made tacos with it, and it was really interesting. But the, the preparation of it was amazing. Uh, okay, so we have a beef tenderloin. This is a six-pound beef tenderloin. Tenderloin is one of the most expensive cuts on a cow, which a lot of people did not know that. It I is a leaner cut. Uh, it's from the same area as the filet mignon. Yeah. Um, it is super delicious and tender, but you need to cook it properly. And uh, it tends to be expensive. So we had gotten this from Fresh Market. It was on sale from $20 a pound to $15 a pound. Wow, that's still a lot. And then there was another thing if you were a member right. that brought it down to $9 a pound, which oh, is the only reason we I have bought it. it because I like tenderloin, but it's tends to be way too out of our price. That's interesting because a, a pork tenderloin is super cheap. Like if right. I'm trying to feed a bunch for very little money, I, I will grab a pork tenderloin. Now here's the thing is that we will get a lot of food out of this because this one is uh, 5.7 pounds. So we'll get a lot, and I don't know how much it was because this is at $5 a pound more than I paid for it because mm -hmm. the, the discount comes off when you go to the register. Right. But you gotta figure, you're gonna take off about 30%. So I would say this thing was probably about $45, $50. Wow. So, but you're gonna, it's not gonna shrink a whole lot because you're not losing the fat. So you do obviously lose some shrinkage because of water, but it doesn't shrink a I tremendous was in the pool. amount. It's not like, you know, cooking 70% ground beef and then losing like a lot of volume because you right. lose all the fat. So anyway, uh, we're gonna divide this into two. We're gonna cut it in half, we're gonna tie it up. I'm gonna show you how to make this in the oven. And when you're done, it is gonna be delicious. And so even if you figure, even if you paid $85, this will give you like three days worth of food, unless you're Rachel. Then it'll give you maybe, maybe two. Here's the thing, it may be something nice to prepare for the holidays. Yes. We were talking with Michelle the last time, which we're going to be going to SeaWorld this weekend to mm -hmm. just have some time with um, Michelle and John Paul and my mom. But Walk around. when we were talking, she was saying, like, I don't really like turkey. And I don't really like turkey all that much. And I say I like turkey, and then when you put it in front of me, I eat like one or two slices. Right. I was that way with pancakes. Like, I really want pancakes and one bite. I'm it. like, yep, and I'm good. Well, and for turkey, it's like you're making such a big amount. But what if for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, you just want something else? Are you allowed to have a beef tenderloin? Yes. It's your holiday season. So Since if, most of our family yeah. has gone keto, other than the boys, our holidays for the last three years have been like steak, ribs, <laughs> right? Um, steak, lots of bacon and eggs, uh, Brussels sprouts cooked in bacon grease, Joe's casseroles, casseroles. That has been the food. And then people who may not be keto, they haven't complained that. Where's the turkey? Mm. Where's the ham? You know, nobody has complained about that because it is still delicious food. What you doing? I am posting Fearless Friday, which this week is about our chicken Bernice. Okay. I have what been, happened? I look like a hot mess of crazy because I have been just scouring the neighborhood for two hours because there was a post in a local Facebook community group suggesting that there was a chicken that is on the loose. It was right by our house. That was the intersection of our house. And so, of course, I assumed 
if anybody did something to make a chicken vulnerable, it was me. Because I am terrible at everything and I mess up and I probably let my chickens down. So I just absolutely went all over the neighborhood trying to find my chicken. And finally, after a freaking long while, I thought to myself, did you even check the backyard to see if there's something wrong? Like if your chicken is actually missing? So I went ahead and checked the backyard and guess what? All of our chickens are accounted for. So I thought, man, that'll preach, right? Because a lot of times when we see almost like an, you know, like an accusation or you think like something's wrong, something's wrong. We automatically assume it's us. We need to fix something. Like if any, if there's a challenge out there, we need to change what we're doing. And your chickens, your ducks may be all in a row. You may have like, you, you know, your chickens are safe. So don't go wandering around after somebody else's chicken. I was out hunting for someone else's chicken, Joe. Okay, so I'm going to add to this. I was cutting our last house. We were actually like just finishing up. Rachel calls me and tells me, I think one of the chickens is out of the yard because it was things thing on Facebook. And we do have two chickens who sleep on the fence. Yeah. I gave up six months ago. They just, they will only go up on the fence. They don't want to go into the hen house at night. We travel and there's no way that the boys are going to like do what Joe's doing, like scoop them up every yeah. single night. For a and... while I was going out every day yeah. and putting them in the hen house and I just gave up. And figuring they want to be there. Nothing is, seems to be bothering them. So we're just going to leave them up there. But this one chicken has accidentally in the morning jumped to the other side of the fence. And she can't get back in. And so now she can't get back over. So I was figuring, okay, yeah, that same chicken, the great Easter egg or chicken, Bernice, she's on the other side. So as Rachel called me and we've got seven chickens coming in two weeks. She's immediately panicking. Maybe we shouldn't get any more chickens. We don't deserve chickens. Like, right? we're not good chicken farmers. And you raced home. I, I raced home. And while I'm coming home, because again, not sure if there's a problem, but I need to make a change, right? I go on Amazon. I order poultry netting. I order stuff to make it so that the chickens will stay in the yard. I order those spikes that you put on top of things so that birds don't roost on your fence. So you put money immediately to my fear. I spent $100. Just absolutely in a sheer panic that we've got to be doing something wrong. If anything is wrong, we are wrong. That's right. Change it up. So here's what I'm going to say. We can apply this to our keto journey. Absolutely. We're chugging along, chugging along. Maybe we go a week, two weeks, three weeks. Maybe we go a month, two months, and we're in a stall. Instead of panicking mm -hmm. and all of a sudden going, I need to change my diet. Must be me. I need to stop eating fat. I need to stop eating protein. Maybe we should just take an inward check yeah. and look at some of the little things and see is there even a problem to begin with? Okay, so we've got our beef tenderloin here. First thing we're gonna do is go ahead and open this up. And we're gonna go ahead and wipe this down a little bit and throw out the package. Okay, so we've got our beef tenderloin here. Now, you're gonna see here, if I can take this off a little bit. Right here, this is a silver skin. Some people like to take this off. Um, it's completely up to you. On a piece of beef tenderloin, I'm not gonna worry about it as much, but all you do is do what I just did there, put your knife underneath it and just pull a little bit. And what happens is that's going to expose the meat. Now, if you're doing this like slow cooking, you don't have to take it off as much because it'll break down. But if you're gonna do it more of like a 25 to 45 minute cook, you may want to take it off because it doesn't break down as easily and it's a pain to chew, but this does contain some good collagen in there. But I just wanna get some sections so I can make sure all of my spices can get into my meat. Uh, I'm gonna pull a little bit more off and you can see, now once you've got it, just again, pull your fingers on, into it and just kind of start pulling it off. I don't really wanna to waste too much meat. We're gonna actually save this meat. And then I'm gonna pull off one more section right here. So what I will actually do is take this, I'm not gonna let it go to waste. 
I'm gonna cut it up into little pieces and I'm gonna feed this to the chickens because they will really, really enjoy that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to cut this one. So this side here is much thicker than this side. So what I'm gonna do is try to make this like two even pieces. So I'm gonna cut it right about here. And I should be using a bigger knife. I just don't feel like grabbing one. We're gonna put this one off to the side like that. And then we're gonna take this one. And what we wanna do is tie this so that we can get a nice round piece of meat and uh, do the same thing with this one. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this one for dinner, but I'm gonna tie this one up, prepare it, and then get it into the freezer. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you I am not very good at tying things up. So I'm not gonna try to do this whole thing on camera. Basically what I'm gonna do is, because this end is flat and this end isn't, uh, I'm gonna pull out some of this fat, which is mostly some silver skin and fat. I'm gonna put it over like this, and then I'm gonna put basically my butcher's twine on this side. I made a little loop, and I'm gonna pull it through. I'm gonna tighten it, and then what I do is basically wrap it. There is a specific technique I have yet to figure out the technique. If there is a butcher out there who is watching us or somebody who is good at this, I would love to learn how to tie a piece of meat. So I'm just gonna basically come around a few times just like that and tie it up. And the idea is we want to make this as even as possible. Okay, so uh, did the best I could. So that's what they look like now, but a little bit more even piece of meat. This one here, we're gonna go ahead and put this into a silicone bag. I actually would usually use Ziploc bags, but I don't have any more. We'll seal that up, stick that into the freezer. We're gonna go ahead and start preparing this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Redmond salt and we're gonna just give it a good coat all the way around. And by the way, we had gotten a comment like, oh, you touch your salt container after uh, when you're working with the meat. Yes, I do. Uh, what we do is whenever I'm done preparing meat and stuff, I just grab some antibacterial wipes, like, you know, some Lysol wipes and stuff like that. And we wipe down all the spice containers. I'm not gonna sit here and every time I grab one of these, wash my hand, it's just us. So when I'm done, I will go wipe all that down. So we're gonna go ahead and just, again, make sure that I've got salt everywhere. Uh, even in here, I like to get a little bit of salt in there. And then from there, you can leave it like this. You can use pepper or I'm gonna take some of the Redmond organic garlic pepper and we're gonna do the same thing. Just coat the whole thing. Again, same thing. You can get it into some of these little cracks and crevices. We want this to really penetrate the meat. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cast iron pan I'm gonna put this in here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this rest on the counter for about two hours. We want this to come up to room temperature before we start cooking it. So it is uh, 10 after six, just got off the field. What a nightmare. It was 58 to nothing. The team that was winning was trying to beat their record against this team last year, which was 91 to nothing. Uh, not very sportsmanlike game, but uh, super hot on the field today. Um, so we're gonna go home, we're gonna take a bunch of electrolytes, not sweetened ones, but a bunch of electrolytes, and uh, we're gonna get that beef tenderloin going. It should take about 40 minutes to cook. Okay, just got home. We're gonna start this beef tenderloin. We're gonna do this in the oven. So first thing we're gonna do is preheat the oven to 425 degrees, and then we're also gonna get our cast iron pan hot. The pan is nice and hot. I'm gonna take a little bit of bacon grease and uh, just put it in the bottom of the pan here. You will get a little bit of smoke. You don't have to do the bacon grease, but I like it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tenderloin and we're gonna sear it for like two to four minutes on each side all the way around. We'll go ahead and roll it over this side. This is what we're looking for. We wanna get that nice char on there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a meat probe and I'm gonna put it like, make sure I get into the middle of the meat. We're gonna go about there. 
And uh, you don't need to do this. You can just come back and check it with an instant read, but I like to have an idea with this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some butter. I'm gonna put a stick up there. And I'm gonna put another piece over here. And uh, we'll actually put it right here. So I got about a half a stick of butter there. And what we're gonna do is now we're gonna put this in the oven, 425 degrees, till we get to an internal temperature of 130. It's not gonna be that long, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, meter says this is done. Oh, look at that. Let's go ahead and check the meat probe one more time. There we go. 128 degrees. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some of this butter. I'm gonna use my little basting brush. Kind of baste it up here on top. And we're gonna let this rest for about five minutes and cook some eggs. That is gorgeous. And uh, did it have a nice rest? It had a nice rest. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and cut off all these ropes, twine, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, once again, we're gonna go against the grain. And let's see. There mm, we go. Looking good. Oh, wow. That is beautiful. Go ahead. The taste test. Mmm. Wow, that's tender. I mean, it's tender loin, but it's actually tender. Okay, one more thing. We're gonna take this sauce, which oh, yeah. is mostly butter. We're gonna put it in here. And we're gonna pour that over our food. And then this, we're just gonna wipe out with a paper towel. Or my tongue. <sighs> Did you wash that pan? No, I told you, we don't wash the pan. What? You take paper towel and you're gonna go wipe it down. And if there's anything stuck, you put some kosher salt on there. And that cleans it? That, well, it, it cleans it the way a cast iron is supposed to be clean. Do not use soap and water on a cast iron pan. You want the flavor. You should have all of that nice grease and everything. I it like this nice grease. It should be all caked up in there be because it's a well-seasoned cast iron pan. That must be it. Here you go. Mm. Like brown oh butter. Because again, tenderloin is a little bit lean, so you definitely want to have this butter. Oh my gosh. Let's go ahead and try this. Oh yeah, you haven't got to try it yet. No, I do see though, you tried to cook your egg yolks. I did, I flipped it when you weren't looking. <laughs> You're supposed to use the egg, the egg yolks as like a sauce for this. This meat is so good, you may not need anything. Super tender, super flavorful, mm. really good. Crazy good. Wow. Crazy wow. good. That, I, I'm gonna tell you, I think it's one of the best pieces of meat that I've ever pulled out of that oven. I think you're right. Hard to do? Mm, super easy. I mean, look out. I literally came home and, and started preparing it in my uniform. Yeah, that's true. And you've not been home that long. No, so we seared it, two, three minutes on each side. So you're searing it for about 12 to 15 minutes. Right. Then you're gonna put it in the oven. It took about 25, 20, 22 minutes. Just if you have a meat probe, it's easier to put it in there and check it that way. But if you don't have a meat probe, just check it after about 20 minutes to the internal temperature you want. If you want it rare, pull it out at about 125 degrees. If you want it medium rare, you wanna pull it out somewhere around 130, 130 to 135, cause it's gonna continue cooking while you let it rest. Mm -hmm. And you can see it, like we didn't lose any of the the sauce from inside, so we rested it for the perfect amount of time. It only needs about 10 minutes of rest time. And again, so we still have another whole half. Nuh-uh, really? So this, I mean, obviously we are eating the entire thing that we just cooked. So it's yes. about two pounds, pound a piece. Uh, but there is another half that we're we- We're about to eat- I put in the freezer. A pound a piece of meat. I mean, you're talking to somebody who's like, what? seven years ago, was seeing how little I could actually eat. You were eating Five, a cup of oatmeal a day. A cup of oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Now I'm eating a pound of meat. You, had for, a, you got a string. For one of my meals. For one, because you ate breakfast. I ate you breakfast. Ate you had bacon and eggs for breakfast. 
And you're having some eggs. I no longer feel run down all of the time. And you're not gaining weight. I'm not gaining weight. We're eating until I'm I'm full. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be embarrassed about it anymore. Right. That I actually do get hungry. It's mm -hmm. a human thing. We get hungry. Mm -hmm. And we feed that hunger with good food. Yep. That is beautifully prepared. Yep. That anybody can cook it this way. Yeah. Everybody's got an oven. Um, if you don't have a cast iron pan, go get a cast iron pan. You, you know, you can find cast iron pans in Walmart pretty cheap. You don't need to have Lake Crusade. No. I like Lake Crusade. It comes with a lifetime warranty. But if I had to pay full price for Lake Crusade, I wouldn't own Lake Crusade. That's that's the bottom. We have an outlet mall here, and then we buy it, and we haven't bought pieces since pre-COVID. Right. We buy it when it's like fifty percent off of the outlet mall price. My mom has even gotten some at like yard sales estate sales where somebody is just like you know if i if they you, don't know what they have yeah and they just get rid of it i was just gonna say that the best place to buy cast iron is a yard sale or a thrift store you want it like if you can find like grandma or great grandma's cast oh, yeah. iron skillet in a yard sale i don't care if that thing is a hundred dollars buy it if it costs more to buy that than it does to buy the one in the store brand new i would buy that one because that's the one that's got the years and years and years of seasoning on it i would love to know leave in the comments down below are you cooking with a a, a frying pan or some or a skillet or whatever like are you cooking with something that an older relative once had i would love to know because i think that that is such a precious thing because you're continuing to nourish the family, right? It feels like... I'm just thinking about how great that pan is going to be. Well, I mean, it's going to be awesome, but it also is... Like, how precious is that? Yeah, no, the memories, that's awesome. That's so beautiful. We're going to finish eating. Yes. Because we have I haven't acting stopped to eating. do. And then tomorrow, or really Sunday, we're yeah. taking Rachel's mom and John Paul and Michelle to SeaWorld. Three generations going to the park together. Almost four. Yeah. Right. Almost four. Yes, you're right. Oh my gosh. So yeah. Cause like, you know, taking four, taking four with us now. And it'll be fun because like John Paul and I are going to, we're going to do all the rides and we are going to do, ladies all, are gonna do all the walking, all around. the walking arounds. Now I do think we're going to end the vlog right here, but I wanted to mention for those of you who liked the nootropic keto bars, mm. the, those are the ones that taste like vanilla icing. They're back or they're going to be back by the time you see this video. Use the link down below. We're not sponsored by them, but I I'm missing my keto brick. I, I was eating about a half a brick to a brick a day before this challenge started. Um, I've got about 15 of those left, but that is a super limited edition. I don't and know I how will long. be placing my order. It's going to run for The us. vlog will be out before they run out. If they run out when you see this vlog, I'm sorry. Yeah. But it's a really good flavor. It's a really good flavor. So definitely use the link down below. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos. We have a link right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent videos I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon in that way every single time. We have beef, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time, bye. bye.